Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here lady, where Karens love to treat regular Joshimo customers as employees. And in today's episode, a Karen learns a super duper painful lesson because she wasn't patient enough. I hope you enjoy the stories today and do hit that subscribe button for future tales. Also, story submissions can be sent to this email right here. Stevie boy, hook them up. So, I've always been a very self-confident type of person, but also easygoing and always trying to do my best to be decent to people. I was just brought up that way. I also expect it from others, and have absolutely zero patience for people who think it's okay to act out or be blatantly rude to people. One afternoon, I was at Wally World, trying to do some shopping. Now, I hadn't thought much of it, but I happened to be wearing the store's colors. A dark blue, button-up shirt, neat jeans, and nice work shoes. I'm a trucker, and I was wearing the shirt for my company. At any rate, I then hear it. A Karen in the wild. I hear, ahem, excuse me. Upon hearing that, I turn to look, and I kid you not. Now, I wouldn't have believed anyone could look like the stereotype, but there she stood business attire, and shoulder-length, straight platinum blonde hair. A huge, the world bows to my whims attitude. She gazed at me sternly, her eyes steely, her demeanor as if she were to berate a servant who had wronged her. I stared silent for a moment, gathering back a swell of irritation at just seeing the attitude this lady had, and then simply blurted, What? Upon hearing that, she jerked back, incredulous, as though I had just slapped her. But she was also quick to recover her look of steely-eyed and now very justified outrage staring out at me from within her perfectly straight platinum blonde locks. She then blurts out, Are you kidding? Employees should not speak to a customer in such a fashion. And yes, she used those exact words, and she did inform me, as though I had done something very wrong by addressing such an important customer in such a disgusting manner. My brows went up, that was all. But I said in a very level tone, I don't work here. I then turned away from her, just intent on going back to my shopping. And she says, You do not turn away from me. The woman was seething behind me. She then went as far as to grab the back of my suspenders. I very calmly turned back around, looked down at her as I towered a foot above her, and then I leaned very close to her face and began in a very low voice. I said, I do not work here. By the time I was out with the word here, I was so loud that I could have been heard all the way through the superstore. I even think I blew her hair back a little. The look in her face was wonderful though. She stammers, I, I, I'm sorry, I, th I thought you were... I then cut her off and said, thought I was an employee? Yes. I was still dead in her face, my eyes now ten times harder than hers ever could be. I then say to her, which you thought gave you the right to speak to me and treat me as though I was beneath you, and I was put on this earth to serve nobody but you? I then leaned in even closer. She stood spellbound, a viper and mouse. She's the mouse, me the viper. I then say to her, well, I got good news for you lady. Buying stuff from a store and spending a little money doesn't grant you a license to abuse or belittle people. At which point I straightened and then did a turn on my heel and walked away from her, while she stood there gaping like a fish out of water, absolutely speechless. It was delightfully wonderful. Oh, I love how OP put that woman in her place. Guys, I feel like all rude customers should be told what Karen was. Buying stuff from a store and spending a little money doesn't grant you a license to abuse or belittle people. Somebody put that on a t-shirt. Alright. So, if you look at my profile, you'll see we bought the boat of our dreams during this whole crazy experience that the world's been going through. With restrictions and cases finally dropping to a level that isn't absolutely bonkers, we decide to go on our first long-distance journey, leaving from the east coast of America and heading west coast. We're planning to be gone for about 90 days. This morning, we awoke in gorgeous San Marino, Mexico, and everything I remember from my youth about the sun was just the beginning to this stunning place. I quickly hit the galley and made some Italian-inspired breakfast burritos, using this lovely habanero sauce that my partner found on our journey. Using three burrito-sized tortillas, I was able to fashion this monster burrito together and grab a fresh beer to start the day, as we're docked here until tomorrow. Now, I tell you about my delicious breakfast burrito because it's the main character in the story today. I stumble up to the main deck with my goodies and our pups in tow. I'm standing there in my Crocs, obnoxiously bright swim trunks and one of those oversized straw hats with a chin strap. When I hear the song of my homeland, an American Karen is going ballistic on what I think were dock workers. 
Hopping onto the dock, I spot her in all of her glory, matching me in stature. Karen's screaming at the two men on the dock about a boat. Not mine, but one clearly privately owned and not some kind of rental. Karen's demanding they provide her the ship for the day, and she's swinging around a fistful of bills. Our Mexican friends are doing their best to communicate to her that they have nothing to do with that boat. Again, I'm assuming she's screaming and stomping as she gestures towards it and they're awkwardly shrugging and attempting to avoid her. And then it happens. I've been spotted. Now I attempt to slink back under the deck, but alas, as I turn around to seal the cabin, I see the final boss, Karen, making a beeline for me with what can only be described as I'm gonna get the manager to do what I say expression. Having two very large and protective dogs, I bite the bullet and step back onto the deck. Karen says, Sir, sir, why don't your workers speak English? How the heck are they supposed to do their job if they don't speak English? There are tourists around here. After a stunned pause, I respond with, Well ma'am, we're in Mexico. The primary language here is Spanish. Also, they're not my workers as I don't work here, so please get off my boat. Hearing this, she goes from zero to a hundred. Karen launches into a tirade about how BS it is and they need to speak English, and I need to get that random person's boat ready for her before her husband arrives with their kids. Add in plenty more racism. I finally cut her off and yell, Hey, I do not work here or even in this country. Get the F off my boat. Now as I'm saying the word boat, Karen shoves me. No words, just a full-on shove, and I did end up going overboard, but the sight I saw on the dock when I came back to dry land was glorious. You see, in my journey of going overboard, I did manage to throw about 70% of the burrito I had in my hand that's still stuffed full of habanero sauce, right at Karen, hitting her in the neck. Apparently it exploded everywhere, and Karen was covered from her cheeks to her midsection, even seeping through the bikini top she was wearing. Surprisingly, after she was done screaming about the heat, she simply sat down and starts crying. Meanwhile, I'm back below deck with a fresh burrito and another beer. I wonder if I'm gonna go for another swim when her husband shows up. Our Mexican friends did manage to hightail it while Karen was all peppered up though, so all ended well. Guys, I don't know how OP held it together. If some random woman comes onto my boat and pushes me overboard, I'd be friggin' furious. Like the fact that OP kept his cool and just went to make a replacement burrito is amazing. So, little old groggy me, who's a medical intern, is finally leaving the hospital after a 36-hour long shift, the second one of the week. It's Friday, and I'm really looking forward for everything to go dark as soon as my head hits a pillow. But first, I need to go to a pharmacy. In my country, some pharmacies have a small lab adjacent to where COVID tests can be taken. There, you'll see a few lab technicians, chemists, and general practitioners who do procedures, run tests, and make common diagnoses. Now, here's the thing. They're all wearing the full one-piece, white hooded suits and protective gear that you've all seen so much. And me, I'm wearing surgical scrubs. So in enters a very sleep-deprived me to the pharmacy, who immediately goes on to examine the toothpaste and brushes. After a little while, I hear a throat being cleared, and I say, oh, my bad, and scooch over closer to the shelves to let the person walk by. And that was the wrong answer. The woman replies, no, 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 I need you to take a look at me. The line to the appointments area is too long. Now at that, I'm confused. I turn and see an all too familiar look. A Karen. I say to her, oh, I don't work here. Now I knew that wouldn't do. So I continue on and say, I work in a hospital. Now I say that hoping it's enough justification for Karen to understand why I'm dressed the way I am. She of course dismisses my claim and says that I must work here as I'm uniformed and stacking shelves. And I'm thinking, yikes, Karen logic. I simply reply, no, but I'm sure an employee is going to be happy to help you. Karen replies, you are a health worker. Why don't you help me? Now, as an intern, I don't even have my degree yet, and I can't and shouldn't do much, even if I wanted to. I simply reply, I'm not on duty, and I don't. She interrupts, snaps her fingers in my face, and says, hey, I paid for my ticket just like everybody else, and you will see me. I tell her, again, I don't work here, and I have no obligation to do random consults whenever you please, lady. Upon hearing that, a floor tile nearly broke due to her jaw dropping. At this point, she's pissed. As if summoned by her indignation, a manager walks over and asks if all's well. Karen seizes her opportunity to talk faster than you can blink, saying, No, this employee is very rude. He's a disgrace to all doctors. I want him fired. 
The manager then looks at her and says, Uh, ma'am, he doesn't work here. Our employees wear... He works here. Stop trying to cover for him. You need to fire him right now. His behavior is unacceptable. He refuses to help me. The manager says, Ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to stop harassing customers, or you're gonna have to leave. Karen's now enraged, letting out a hybrid between a roar and a sigh, saying, Oh, I can't believe the audacity of you people. Treating customers here like this? This is outrageous. She then slaps the products off the closest shelf, sending items flying onto the floor and the manager and me, with an accusatory pink clawed index finger flying erratically saying, I will not give you idiots any more business, and I hope this putrid little pharmacy goes under. She then storms off, huffing and puffing. I hurry off to pay and leave, before she looks at the appointment ticket still clutched in her hand, and realizes that she's paid for something she hasn't used, and decides to return demanding a refund, or worse, attention. I exit the pharmacy and movement catches my eye. I turn to see Karen inside her SUV, foaming from the mouth, clutching her steering wheel, and violently pushing and pulling herself. Then she sees me. I walk faster, trying not to look at her, and she lowers a window and starts screaming some more at me. I ignore her and hurry to my escape pod on wheels. Escape was successful. Honestly, this is one of the times where a Karen mistakes someone for an employee that actually kinda makes sense, right? At least OP was wearing surgical scrubs. Instead of the usual jeans, flip-flops, and a Zelda shirt, which apparently makes everybody a Walmart employee. Okay, so background to the story. My parents and I had a family-run handyman slash rental property business for a little over 20 years. As such, we were regular customers at one particular store. About 30 some odd years ago, there was a lumber yard slash building supply store in my city that everybody went to for their building repair needs. It was a very busy store with lots of well-paid employees to help customers. Each assistant knew their section of the store and how products were to be used. Then the two big brand box stores moved in town and this lumber yard's business bottomed out. They went from a full, knowledgeable staff to a skeleton crew of minimum wage teens who didn't know the difference between a measuring tape and a yardstick. The manager was a foul-tempered bastard, with zero tolerance dealing with anybody that wasn't a large account contractor. Us old-timers still preferred that store, as we knew where everything was. When we needed something, we would just go in and get it. No muss, no fuss. Now, because the store was so severely understaffed and the kids didn't know their butts from a hole in the ground, us old-timers were willing to help people unfamiliar with the store, to find whatever they were looking for. On this day, I had gone to the store to get some pipe fittings, and to do a little bit of browsing, when I spot an older gentleman looking lost. So I approached him and asked if he needed help finding something. The look of relief on his face was palatable. He explained a recent windstorm had damaged the gate on his privacy fence, and he needed new hinge parts. He says to me, I've been looking for someone to help me, but I've only found one kid, who knew less than me. He was no help. I tell him I understood, and explain why the service here was so bad now, and that in the future, he should simply ask another customer for help. Odds were that the other customer would be a regular who knew what and where. At this point, I directed Mr. Gentleman three aisles over to where the parts he needed were located. As we stood looking over the gate hardware, I asked some questions regarding the damage. It was fortunate that I did, as the damage he described was far more severe than a simple hinge would fix. As I explained what he needed to do to fix the gates, we were interrupted by a clawed hand, digging into my shoulder and a screech in my ear saying, I need help. Enter the Karen. Now, this lady was of an older generation, caked on makeup, tight-fitting starch jacket and skirt, and impractical stiletto high heels. I simply turned my body so she was forced to let go. Still, I was raised with manners, so I calmly said, I don't work here, ma'am. Hearing this, Karen screams, Liar! I saw you help this man find what he wants. Now it's my turn. Find me this part for my rental house. She then holds up a slip of paper with notes scrawled on it. I tell her again, I don't work here ma'am, I'm a customer as well. I said once more while pointing at my clothes, which consisted of a black t-shirt, grungy old torn jeans, black surplus military boots, all of which were liberally covered in a combination of paint splatters and drywall spackle. Now, Karen ignored what I said and she said, Look here. I'm the store's largest customer, as I own over 300 rental properties across town, and the manager is a good friend of mine. If you don't get me this part right now, I will have your ass fired. Now, as I've said, the manager of the store was a nasty piece of work to anybody that didn't have a large bank book. From the looks of Karen's clothing and jewelry, I figured she'd be someone that the manager would brown nose. 
As I didn't want to risk the manager banning me from the store, I decided to just go along and help her find what she was looking for and be done with it. I took the paper and looked at the notes. It was a part for an old gas floor heating furnace. The system was no longer legally code compliant, but that didn't stop property owners from still using the stupid things if they could find the parts. Now as I've had to pull more than one of these cumbersome suckers out of rent houses, I knew a thing or two about them, including where the parts should be, if available. I excused myself from Mr. Gentleman and took off at a brisk walk. Karen had to struggle to keep up in her two tight pencil skirts and high heels. The heating aisle was three quarters of the way across the store. Karen didn't seem to enjoy the brisk walk. I quickly walked down the aisleway looking for the part in question, and as I thought would be the case, the part wasn't stocked on the shelves. Just to be sure, I craned my neck to look at the top overstock shelf. To my utter surprise, lo and behold, there were a couple of boxes of the part. Now the real fun starts. I point out the part in question to Karen, and she says, Get it. I tell her, I can't, it's in the overstock. Only the store employees allowed to use the ladder to get something off those shelves. Karen then screams in my face saying, You are an employee. Now I've been told I have the patience of a saint, but I do have my limits. Rampant stupidity is my Rubicon. I then say to her, Listen here you blathering moron. I am not an employee. I am a customer. Customer. C-U-S-T-O-M-E-R. A person who buys here, not works here. Go to the front desk and tell whoever's working there that you need that part off the overstock. They will get someone who does work here to get a ladder to get the part for you. With that, I walked away. Now, since this was a Karen I was dealing with, this was so not over with. I had returned to Mr. Gentleman, who should be noted informed me that he had a good laugh when he heard me spelling out the word customer halfway across the store. As we were wrapping up our previously interrupted discussion concerning the repairs of the fence gate, a young woman approaches Mr. Gentleman and I. She says, Um, excuse me. Yeah, I responded. My first thought was she was a customer who needed some help. She then says to me, Now I know you don't work here because I'm pretty sure everybody in the state heard you spelling out customer. But since nobody else seems to be around that does work here, I thought I should tell somebody that I just saw that woman pushing a ladder down the same aisle that I saw you and that woman in earlier. Hearing that, I was like, oh crap. I then took off like a rocket, heading for the front of the store. It only took me a handful of seconds to get to the registers and the ordering counter. As I feared, the only person at the station was the manager, and he was busy talking to a contractor on the phone. I waved my arms to get his attention, and he turned away ignoring me. I began slapping the counter loudly while yelling his name. He then put a finger in his opposite ear to drown out the sounds. Now, do you know of those reddish discs of peanut brittle that some stores have at the counters makes for great projectiles. Mr. Manager was quite vulgar in his displeasure, having had one bounce off his head. I cut off his tirade by yelling that one of his customers was trying to use a stock ladder to get a box from the overstock shelf. And that shut him up, long enough for both of us to hear the Karen scream of distress echoing across the building. He then looked at me with dawning horror, and I simply said, heating aisle. We both took off running. We found Karen lying at the bottom of the stock ladder, her left foot bare of a shoe and was twisted around in the opposite direction it should be pointing. Her missing shoe, the stiletto heel, protruding through the steel grating was at the top of the ladder's platform. It was obvious the heel had slipped through the grating and Karen had lost her balance and broke her ankle while falling. Mr. Manager uses his walkie-talkie to order a yard guy to call an ambulance. During the entire time we were waiting for the ambulance, Karen just kept screaming and screaming, which was understandable, being in pain, but sheesh, did she have a high pitch. When the medics began to take her away, she points at me yelling at the manager saying, I want him fired. He is utterly useless. To which point the manager looks at me, looks back at her, back at me, then back to her and says, He doesn't work here, but I'll fire him anyways, okay? Mr. Gentleman, standing nearby observing the events, busted a gut laughing. Now, I love how in the midst of paramedics taking her away, she had to scream out, I want him fired. Now, it does suck that she couldn't find a real employee when she needed help, though, since the store sounded super understaffed. Because if she did, her foot still might be facing the right way. Ouch. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed these awesome stories today because I sure as heck did. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, a spoiled, entitled brat gets pulled over for drunk driving and it gets worse. Check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next time. We love you. Next time. I mean, next one.
Not next time. Yeah, next time too, but next one, I meant. <laughs>